we are indeed living in very fascinating times. And this papal visit is causing a tremendous stir. The Pope is currently in Cuba, and he will be in the United States on the 23rd of September when he will meet President Obama. Now, if you study the internet, you will see that there is a great deal of excitement and a lot of speculation surrounding all of these issues. And conspiracy theories are frequently cited. And the occult world is astir. There seems to be a confluence of many, many issues surrounding this papal visit. Now, as a people, we are concerned with prophecy and not with all of these events, whether they be Kabbalistic or otherwise. Prophecy is which guides our feet. And if we study prophecy, we know what the prophecies say, that the papal system will again receive the power that it had in the Middle Ages, that the whole world would wander after the system, in other words, receive its mindset. And if we hear the voices that are speaking currently, then this becomes very, very apparent. Ban Ki-moon just recently praised the Pope as the moral bastion of the world. And it is interesting that the Pope will be speaking at the United Nations on the 25th of September. And let's have a look at what the, what the outside world is saying. What are the theories that are abounding? There's, of course, much ado about the 22nd and the 23rd being Yom Kippur, depending on which time zone you are in on this world, in this world. And, of course, this is the beginning of this Jewish calendar, the month of Tishri, the 10th day. And there are many, many theories around Shemitahs and around Jubilees that are circulating at this very moment. The occult world, fascinatingly enough, also calculates the 23rd and the 24th as to be very, very essential in their occult calendar. It's interesting that this Pope is the 266th Pope, and he'll be visiting Obama on the 266th day of the year. And then some people speculate that it takes 266 days from conception to birth. And what is it that they are expecting to be birthed? And uh, the foreign minister of France on May the 14th, 2014, announced that we are on the edge of the climactic abyss and that there were only 500 days left to avoid climate chaos. Interesting statements. He made that statement three times. Once in the presence of John Kerry and he made the same statement before the French Parliament on the same day. Fascinating. So how is it possible that there can be such an exact number of days to avoid climate chaos. What was he referring to? And why does it exactly coincide with the time when the Pope will be in Washington? Now, all of these issues, as I say, are Kabbalistic speculations. And if the dates fall into place so nicely, well, then that is a bonus. But we are not interested, actually, in all these events and all these speculations. Prophecy is what guides our feet. The word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And the word tells us what the events will be. The mark of the beast will be implemented at some stage. The world will be following the dictates of the Roman system. And these are the issues that we must be watching for. Now, it's interesting that while the Pope was in Cuba, he met Fidel Castro, and the Castros, of course, are reigning. Both of them baptized Catholics, trained and raised by Jesuits in Jesuit schools. And they have always been close to the papacy. If there was a great papal event, they were represented. So this game about being anti-Catholic or being uh, against Catholicism and religion 
was never reflected in the past owing to their papal vit visits. The message that Pope Francis had for Cuba was one of reconciliation, bringing ideologies together, having created the gateway for peace between Cuba and the United States. This was a time to celebrate the unity, the confluence of the Hegelian dialectic, the fusion of minds. Now, it's also interesting that in the occult world, September the 23rd, September the 24th, is considered the time when Osiris will be manifested. And uh, if we look at those issues, we can come to some interesting conclusions. He will be meeting Obama in the White House on the 23rd of September. And as we have studied, the White House gets its name from Andrew White, the Jesuit who dedicated Maryland to the Immaculate Conception. And that is why the Immaculate Conception is on the agenda of the papal visit. He will be visiting the shrines of the Immaculate Conception and he will be holding special meetings in these places. Whatever is said or not said in the White House is irrelevant. The date is interesting, the 23rd, which still covers Yom Kippur. The following day, he will be addressing Congress, the first pope in human history to address both houses in Congress. Now the Capitol is actually a temple. And if we consider that the Pope considers himself to be divine as a reincarnation, as it were, of the deity, Osiris, then Osiris will actually be manifesting himself in the form of the Pope in that temple. What he will say, no one knows. It's open to speculation. One thing is for sure, though. When Ratzinger visited the German parliament, he stated that the fact that he was speaking there was an acknowledgement of his moral authority. Now, it's interesting that Ban Ki-moon made so many statements about the moral stature of the Pope. Will he be addressing them in terms of climate change or other issues? Many people are speculating about Sunday legislation. I don't think those will be the issues. Just the mere acknowledgement of his moral authority in addressing this illustrious body is sufficient signal to the world. The world will take note. Obama has already opined that the encyclical that the Pope had released on climate change was to be a guideline for future action. That is why the next visit at the United Nations is equally important, having produced the encyclical, which, by the way, does state that Sunday is to be pivotal in this climate issue, as well as the Eucharist, how exactly that theologically combines with climate change is still a mystery. Nevertheless, he put them together. He probably will be addressing climate change at the United Nations, but climate change is just a means of creating something greater a new world order where all people come together with one mindset. It's interesting that The Economist, the magazine that well, is produced by the illustrious economists of the world in 2015, January 2015, showed all the world leaders arrayed behind Obama with the Pied Piper moving in the front. And that, of course, uh, is the way in which people are led in a particular direction. Is that what the French minister alluded to? This great visit of the Pope? Why 500 days? Because they absolutely end on the 24th when he speaks to Congress. Announced 500 days in advance to avoid chaos, climactic chaos. Will Sunday be an issue? Well, yes, because he addresses the world meeting of, of families thereafter and he has already claimed 
before that Sunday is the very basis and heart of the family because it is the only day in which the whole family can come together. So yes, all of these issues are on the table. We are going to speak about a new order in the world, even if it is brought about by climate legislation. We are going to speak on this tour about Sunday because he has already stated that Sunday is the heart of the family and he's addressing this illustrious meeting in Philadelphia, which of course means brotherly love. And then he will be attending various Marian shrines. So these are the events that are taking place. There's a Kabbalistic agenda, and, and the dates make beautiful Kabbalistic sense. But that is not what we are focusing on. What is the greater issue? Is the world going to come together in some form of consensus? Even if it is climate change that they use to introduce this. And are they going to introduce legislation to bring about a basis for a new dispensation in terms of the economic world, which then would include Sunday legislation? Only time will tell. Prophecy has predicted these events, and we are living in the time when we can actually witness things them happening before our very eyes. These are interesting times. We need to watch the events. We need to be watchmen on the walls of Zion. We need to study prophecy. We need to sweep away the hype and the occult agendas and look at the heart of the prophetic culmination. When the man of sin will enthrone himself, take the place of God, and introduce laws and legislation which are contrary to the law of God. The nations will fall in line and do this work for him. May God give us wisdom as we study the events.